Oh, look at that. Dude. Look at his scales got just knocked off right there. Oh, he got him. Got him. Jesus. <laughs> this is when something crazy happens right here. Look at him, look at him, swallowing it, look at him. No way. Yeah, oh yeah. That bobber just went down. Where did I just stay? Where's my rod? Oh God, where's the rod? <laughs> it's to the left, 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 left. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. We're going fishing today. Going fishing with a very special bait that's hopefully gonna break the curse of the non-fish catching lojo, which I'm under right now. So in the south, the last two weeks, the weather has been absolutely insane. It has gotten as low as 18 degrees, and it's gotten as high as 78 degrees. Now it's within a two week span. Now when the weather gets crazy like that, there's two things. One, I'm not happy about it because I don't like being cold. Two, the Florida bass, the Florida strain of largemouth bass, hate it when the weather is destabilized like that, especially when a cold front comes out of nowhere, they hide, they don't eat, they're not aggressively feeding, they become increasingly difficult to catch. So I'm at my local bait and tackle shop, really tiny mom and pop shop. I love coming here to get the magic baits that are hopefully gonna break the curse and help me and Andrew, who's back behind the Yo. camera today, catch some fish at one of the spots I just have not been able to catch fish for weeks. Andrew, are you ready? I'm salty. Let's get in here, see exactly what I'm talking about. Ooh, Come on, my friend Andrew. How y'all doing? I'm good. Y'all yeah. have any new fish? Yeah, I, I was about to say that I haven't seen the gar before. And the turtles. Yeah, I haven't seen the turtles yet either. Got a little bass, a little catfish, bluegill, gar. What's that? Those cichlids. Does the gar eat the crickets? No. Oh, look at that turtle that's going to town. <laughs> the turtle's not waiting for the fish. <laughs> oh, that's it. What kind of, that looks like a different kind of turtle. <laughs> He's trying so close. Oh, he got him. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, sheesh. That was like a top water blow up. And I need some minnows. That's gonna be my secret bait for today. Live bait, especially minnows, for me, is something that just always catches fish. When I can't catch them on artificial lures, minnows is the way to go. This is where I come to get my minnows. I'm gonna get a couple dozen of those bad boys, put them on hooks, throw them out there. The best part about minnows, not only do they catch fish consistently, you can catch literally any fish in the ponds with a minnow. Nice. Oh, we got some shiners in here. Those are some pretty good size ones, too. Oh yeah. Let's do, okay, let's do two dozen minnows and two dozen shiners. Let's get some minnows and some shiners. Shiners maybe can catch us that big fish of the day. A shiner is basically just a big, bigger minnow. Right, Andrew? That's right. It's a bigger minnow. <laughs> I don't count them. I just make sure you get them in. Yeah, I appreciate it. You never have too many, you know? Yeah. Look at these big old jokers right here. Look at them. Sheesh. <laughs> these things are big. We're gonna catch a bottom on one of those things. Okay, we'll see y'all again soon. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. All right, so we got our bucket. Huge bucket full of paint. Sheesh. Did you see the size of those shiners? Dude, she gave you so much. The, these folks, they're such good people. It's a mom and pop shop, like I've said before. And uh, you, know, you order two dozen shiners and they gave us what, like 40? At least. 50 maybe? So yeah, that gave me an idea in the shop. Let me know real quick if you guys want to see something like this. There's a pond with some big bass in it where I live. So I was thinking I could do like maybe where I go in there and buy like just a ton of jumbo shiners and like stock one of these big bass ponds with some shiners. Let me know if that's something you guys are maybe interested in. Maybe not, I don't know. It just kind of occurred to me that we could do something like that and really help fatten some of these bass up in some of these ponds that I fish. But for today, let's just stick with fishing with these bad boys. Let's see how many fish the minnows can catch and if we can catch a big fish on one of those shiners. Let's go. Let's take a look at our bait here. We've only got like an hour left of daylight, so we're gonna have to move kind of quick. See if I can get my hands on. There's some, let me get a shiner and a minnow. Oh, perfect. I got one of each. All right, so your basic minnow, just a little fish. I mean, that's that's what it is right there. It's a tiny little fish. And you got your shiner, which is obviously much larger of a fish. And with bigger bait comes typically bigger fish. Doesn't always work like that, but 
Let's hope for the sake of today's video that that's exactly how it works. Now we have two combos here. We've got your traditional like spinning combo, real light line, super small hook right there. We're gonna put the minnows, the smaller fish on this one. We've got a much heavier duty bait casting combo with some heavier line, a bigger hook, and this is gonna be for the big Berthas. We're gonna put the shiners on that one. We're gonna get one of each rigged up, get them both out in the water, and we've got to hurry because we're running out of time. Maybe we'll go ahead and get the, uh, the big ones out there first, right? Big Daddy. Go ahead and get Big Daddy, Big Mama out there. So there's two ways to hook them. You can hook them through the jaw or you can hook them through the back. I like hooking them through the back because it lets them swim a little bit more freely, just like that. You want to avoid their spine because if you hit them in the spine, it's going to kill them. And we want them to be alive. So right. That way they swim all around. So let's just chuck him out out into the middle, just right in the middle for right now. Pick up the much smaller minnow pole. Go ahead and give us some minnow. If you guys could see that bobber, you would see the bobber's just like moving around like this. That's because the shiner is swimming. Like he's, he's frantically swimming because he has a hook in his back. So he's panicking a little bit. And while that's kind of not cool to think about, it's gonna be really good for a bass or another predator fish. Because they're gonna see a small bait fish panicking and they're gonna go attack it. The little fish are hiding with the big fish. I can't get a minnow because they're hiding. Okay, this is kind of a big minnow or a small shiner, but we'll go ahead and slap him out there too. Oh, it just, oh man, that bobber just got hammered. Oh. Oh man, my shiner bobber just went down, but the key is you wanna wait. See how he's moving, he's twitching, Andrew? He's twitchy. It went down completely submerged, but it didn't stay down, which means whatever was attacking, it did not have the hook in its mouth. Because when they do, that bobber should disappear and it should stay down. Then you know to set the hook. Nothing happened though, so that's not great. My shiner's still on there though, cause he's still swimming around. Whoo, it's getting a little crazy, Andrew. The thing is we are running out of time, but this is like the golden hour. I mean, the last hour before sunset, that could be a magical fishing time. Plus tonight the temperature is dropping like 20, 30 degrees. So that pre cold front magic hour afternoon, late evening bite could be something special. I'm gonna check on oh, my- dude, dude, dude. It went under, it went under. Really? That must, see that's probably, that's probably either a gar, which are nibblers, what I call them. They don't just take it, a, a good bass, when he hits it, the bobber's gonna disappear, it's gonna be gone. When a panfish or a gar or something, they tend to nibble, they'll bite, they'll let it go, they'll bite, they'll swim a little bit, but the bobber will kind of stay on top of the water. Really frustrating fish to mess with. I'm gonna check on my shiner, cause he got destroyed. So I need to check on him, see how he's doing. See if he's been hit. Oh, look at that. Dude. Look at his scales got just knocked off right there. On both sides. Yeah, he got, he got, his head got consumed by something. <laughs> but they missed the hook because they ate him head first. That's crazy. Did you see that? Yeah, they freaking dude. like half the, his front half of scales were just like torn off. Shaven. Yeah, so he got hit. He's swimming real good though. Now I put him back out there. That's good. This guy has swam all the way from there out here. So he's panicking. That's good. We want them to panic. Panic <laughs> we, and suffer. We want the bait fish to panic. I know it's cruel, but it's going to lead to better fishing. I'm gonna put a new shiner on there. The first one got hit hard and shiners, they're weird creatures, man. Like they get hit hard one time. And sometimes they'll just like, they, it, 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 it stresses them out so much. They just, they won't swim anymore. They'll just sit there. I went ahead and released him. Maybe he'll survive and become a bigger whatever kind of fish shiners <laughs> are. I don't even know what they are. Oh man, we just had something in my line stuck on something. Oh, it set the hook. Oh, that's oh a good, that's a decent little fish. Come on, that might be what we're looking for. That was on the big, the big shiner. Okay, not huge, but it's a nice start. Gotta play him right, nice and easy. He's not huge. Oh, into the middle bucket. <laughs> Okay, look at that right in the lip. Nice, look at that guy right there. Okay, not a big, not a huge fish, but not a small, not a, not a tiny fish either. Whew, that hook got him right at the top of the mouth too. That's, that was good. You see that now, did you see that Andrew? I, di I didn't see it go under. So that one, that one there was no doubt. The bobber was bloop and it was gone. Like you, it's just yeah. gone. A good sized bass, I mean they inhale that bait and they're gone, they're swimming off with it. Had him. All right, first fish of the evening. I'll take that any day of the week. 
Go find some more. Oh! <laughs> What's not a good omen is hooking yourself right in the face. Dude, my knot had came loose. That's weird. <laughs> That's not good. This might be one of those evenings where they want a big bait, you know? Yep. Trying to get a nice meal or two in before this cold front comes in tonight. They can feel it. These fish, they can feel those fronts coming in. Oh, that's a big one. Look at that freaking tank right there. Oh, that's like a little baby tuna. Good God, that's a big old joker. Make sure I hook him good so he doesn't get thrown off. Through the meatiest part of their back. Right back in the middle. I don't know why, I just feel like those big fish might just kind of cruise in the middle this time, you know? Just kind of like looking for a big meal. Nope, sun's going down, dinner time. I, don't, I mean, I don't know, you know? But it, it worked that time, so we'll see. The little minnow just got hammered. But once again, the barber came right back up. Come on, go down. Get Rolling. Down. Got it, Something got it. Something just nailed my big shiner. Oh, he yanked it out of his mouth. I may have been late on that one. He may have got me. Yep, he sure did. I was late to that party. Oh boy, dude, right here again, right in front of us. That time, the big shiner got slammed again, and I was just really late to the hook set on that one. I would have liked, ooh. Good dog. What you always want to hear when you're in a field. Out fishing in a field is gunshots. No cover. No cover. <laughs> That's twice though. A shiner has gotten hit right in front of us. And twice, like there was no doubt that was a big, that was a, that was a fish, you know, probably a bass. Because that bobber went down, no questions asked, and stayed down. The problem is, by the time I got to it, that bass had probably chewed on it and just gotten it off the hook, you know, just because that's how, how they eat, you know. That's okay though, because we're clearly on them, or at least near them, but we're tick, 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 running out of time. Dude, again, I'm going straight to the hook set this time. Got him. Jesus. <laughs> Come on, be bigger. He looks about the same size. Looks like the same freaking fish. <laughs> okay, they may be like schooling up right there in front of us. Once again, he's hooked in the top of the mouth. Look at where we're getting him, I mean, we're getting these fish right in the top of the mouth. They're not going to get away if you can keep tension on them. You know what? We're going to give this guy a snack. Since he ate for us, let's give him give him a little snack. Here, let's see if he'll swallow this shiner. Look at him. Look at him swallowing it. Look at him. No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he swallowed its head already. Well, he'll, he'll swallow the rest of it when he gets in the water. Right. Now he'll get he'll get a little re a reward, a little treat. Since we have so many, there's no way we're gonna go through all these in 30 minutes. Is my other bobber still there? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's still there. All right, let's uh, get another shiner out there. I'm getting pretty excited. And, and the theory would be now, if there is a bunch of them, that's probably the same one that, that stole my last shiner. He's probably just, they're just eating. But if there's a few of them down there, there's probably a big one down there. Oh, there's a big shiner right there. All right, well, we're getting desperate here. We've got maybe 15 minutes of light left. Don't know how well you guys can even see me right now. So I'm going to try something. I'm gonna grab a, a handful of fish and I'm going to get a little schooling action going on. Yeah! Maybe if I flood the pond, especially this area with a bunch of bait fish, maybe what will end up happening is Ah! Maybe the bass will get the memo that there's a bunch of bait over here. Maybe they'll hear all this commotion and all this vibration, this little fish swimming around. Maybe they'll all come over here real quick and they'll be my fish that are hooked and can't get away. Maybe they'll eat them. Sounds like a solid plan, doesn't it? For sure. If nothing else, we're just gonna feed these bass. That's right. I mean, because they're gonna get eaten eventually. Grow them. So either way, see if the old schooling bait fish technique works. So quick little story from the bait shop that we were just at earlier. So about what, like six months ago, Andrew? Cause you were with us, six, seven, eight months? Yep. Last summer. Summer, yeah. Myself, fishing with Norm, kicking their bass TV, and Andrew were all together doing a collaboration where I live in Southeast Alabama. And we actually went in that shop for one of Noah's videos, right, Andrew? That's it. Cause you were being our camera person for that day. 
we were filming a video for Noah and we were looking around, we were feeding the fish, this and that. So as we were leaving today, a guy approached us in the parking lot we had never met before. And apparently he either works at that shop or he maybe owns the shop with his dad or we didn't really understand who he was, but he told us that since that video came out last summer that he has had just dozens of people coming in that shop talking to them about us. You know, obviously there were subscribers of either mine or Kicking Their Bass TVs or Fishing With Norms or even Andrews. And they have found this shop in Southeast Alabama and went and told the guy or you know, <laughs> gave, gave the guy business and told him they're big fans of our channel. And it was the coolest thing of all time. So big shout out to all you guys who may have may or may not have been a part of that crew. But yeah, big shout out to you guys. And that's an awesome little bait shack. I go there often. Oh, dude, my freaking shiner is running so hard. This is crazy. This is like one of those moments where something crazy is going to happen. Like we're about to call it a night. Andrew's got the freaking phone flashlight on <laughs> so you guys can even see me. Like, this is when something crazy happens right here. This is when it happens. Oh, that bobber just went down. Where did I just stay? Where's my rod? Oh, God, where's the rod? <laughs> it's to the left, left, Where left, left, left. Where is it? Oh, gosh, dude, that's an expensive oh, reel. Yeah. Set him. the hook, got dude. Him. Oh, it's not even big. Are you kidding me? He came off. Oh, dude, is this, I think this bobber's down. No, it's still there. I still got my freaking. I still got my dang shiner. Dude, what's happening right now? Let's get a fresh shiner on there real quick. He's probably too stressed out. He ain't gonna swim very good. That was like the smallest bass ever right there. Oh, how did he still have the hook in his mouth? I don't know, dude. Honestly, I couldn't even find my rod. It's so dark out here, I can't uh, see anything. I was like, that's such an expensive uh, reel. Yeah, you, good point. Let's get him back out there in the middle again. I swear. They're just like, for whatever reason, all right, let's put this real rod where I know where it is. That's a good, a good right plan. There. I did have the bale open. I bet you that's what saved me. I bet you it pulled some slack out. All right, well, we just can't do it anymore, guys. It's if we had if we had like better lighting, <laughs> a better lighting situation than not like a cell phone, <laughs> maybe we could continue this mission, or maybe we could do this again. If you guys want to see this again? Let me know. I'll drag Andrew back out here <laughs> and we'll freaking go night fishing somewhere. What we're going to do with the remainder of these guys, Andrew actually has a pet bass in an aquarium back home where he lives. So if you guys want to see stuff like that, you have to go over to his channel. So you have to go over there and check out his videos of him feeding his pet bass stuff like this. So we're going to let him take as many of these as he wants. Um, he said he doesn't need many. So I'm going to release a couple of the shiners. I'm just gonna grab a couple of them and show a couple of them real quick before I release them, just so, you know, these are, these are really big, nice, healthy bait fish. Oh no, I'm just gonna chuck them in there. It's gonna be really good for the big bass population. The bass in this particular pond, I mean, I haven't caught any trophies out of here. I've caught like a five out of here, but I've seen a couple cruising that could have been six or seven. So this is the pond that we, we could just buy a ton of shiners and come back out here and just like load this pond up and maybe fish with shiners again during the day. And really try to catch that trophy bass so uh, yeah i think i've gotten just about all the shiners i'm gonna let andrew take the minnows home to his what's your pet bass's name kevin dude kevin oh my goodness okay so kevin is hungry he needs to eat that's that right. should be plenty of food for kevin don't you think oh dude kevin's gonna freaking overdose kevin's gonna be eating good so guys i enjoyed this very much hopefully you did too if you did smash the thumbs up button also hit the subscribe button join the lojo fam the best subscribers on youtube Guys, I am getting out of here onto the next outdoor adventure. I'm out.